So let's get on to the uh, to the demonstration. Then I'm going to uh, bring up the new version here, and I've got to do a quick log in because, as we all know, it likes to uh, kind of time you out there if you're not doing it. So uh, this is 10.1. I upgraded my system last week and uh, got this up and running. It's uh, it, it's a very new modern front end. I'm uh, I'm really pleased with it. Uh, as far as what the look and feel goes, and uh, I'm obviously doing this on my uh, on my little laptop here in a VM environment. And by the way, I, su I suspect everybody knows that uh, SDE is fully supported on uh, VMware, uh, ESX servers, as well as uh, Hyper-V. So if you're getting into virtualization, know that this uh, this tool is certainly uh, available there. Again, the tabs, the the quick views, starting in version 10 and continuing here in 10.1, now show up as uh, tabs across the top, which makes it a little bit uh, more manageable. We know that we used to have a, a, a an icon up here that allowed you to have a navigation bar. That's now been kind of replaced with an envelope expanding thing over here. So if I want to see what my nav bar is momentarily to do something, I can expose you know whatever my uh, my ideas are there. So let's go in and do incident management and kind of take a look at the new default layout of an incident form. And as you can see, I, I think it's actually improved over what the older version versions were, but uh, you can make that uh, that determination. So, you know, it requests your information, categorization of the subject, obviously relating to CIs if we've done that back with the uh, with the requester here. So I'm going to, of course, if I know the name of the requester, I can obviously type in the client ID. If I don't, I can certainly look it up there, as you would expect. I can then go in and look at my category tree, depending on how you, uh, you know, how you might have that, uh, how you might have that set up. And again, as you, nothing's really changed here. You can have multi levels of, uh, of uh, information that you want to associate with it, and you know, just put that into your form, and that's how we uh, then get those associations. Oops. Hit the wrong button there. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll just come in and grab a. Uh, we'll just grab something simple here to get the uh, get the ticket going uh, as to what we're doing. And you know, this way now, since I have a, uh, identified who my client is, of course, I can see all of the configuration items that have been assigned to this particular individual. We all know the advantage of if you then associate the incidents with the underlying. Uh, uh, asset that we're doing, that's what then enables you to build a great inventory service history as far as what's going on. So in this case, if I go over and look at this uh, uh, this configuration item that I'm linking this incident to, we can see that it's a, you know, it's a Dell Latitude uh, laptop here. We know uh, when we put it into, it's currently in production. We know when we did the original installed. Uh, you know, we set up rules that you have to have a unique serial number and asset tag for this CI type, and that's all configurable, as most of you know. If you want to show the financial information around this uh, particular asset, you, that's optionally you can do that. It's currently assigned out either to an individual name or to a location, depending on how you uh, set up your CI assemblies. And I can see that it's also tied to a uh, service contract here. As far as if we do have a break fix issue here, I can open up this service contract, find out the telephone number to call for support, and, and, and get that information done. But down in my detailed section here, and the real advantage of, of doing the whole service history, of course, is being able to see everything that's happened to that uh, laptop over time. And another new feature introduced in version 10, of course, was the ability to maximize your detailed section so that I can see more than one record at a time. And you know the advantage of doing that, of course, is I can see everything that's happened from the very day that I installed this device to every repair or configuration change that we've done along the way. So I get this really great service history of knowing the life cycle uh, actions from procurement to retirement of that asset that's happened. And then by default, it automatically associates all the incidents where that device was associated with it. The same thing on work orders, changes, and uh, and so forth. So it, it really, it's, it's working the same way in version 10, 1, and even 10 as it's been doing. But I just always like to reemphasize: if you will get those assets into SDE using you know whatever discovery tools and leveraging the integration engine that comes with SDE. 
I think you'll have a, uh, a, a much more usable system that you can get some, uh, get some benefits out of. Uh, if you uh, uh, wanted to then look at uh, the other things that we typically do, right, here's where we can pick the, uh, the, the in this case, we're, we're picking what value we want to put here. This was that other feature where you can have different co uh, colorations just to make it easier to read. If you think about the old green bar paper, the reason they did that was if you're looking at a massive sheet, you can kind of pick out your row there. So we'll pick their impact and our urgency. We'll save this record, which as we all know then establishes your priority and comes down and, and computes you know, when this information is going to be due. We can uh, you know, put in the uh, description of uh, what the issue is. And then as we work this system, if we want to put in some uh, incident details, again, before you would write mouse click and say add details, and now we just click a little plus button, and it brings up whatever your action IDs you've configured in your system are. Uh, so I just want to put in some notes here, and I indicate what it is. That becomes, a, uh, that becomes an entry down here in my section. And then likewise, just to kind of reiterate those email conversation enhancements that were brought about in 10, is now if I want to spawn an email from within the incident, certainly identifies who the end user was here, but then I can also look out at other client and staff uh, table members and use either my shift or my control key to uh, you know, add them on this particular email trail. Uh, as I mentioned, we also have the ability to add uh, attachments on these outbound emails. So when I do that and I send that out, you'll notice that uh, it said on the word wrapping down here so that I can see everybody that was on receipt of that mail. And again, just for the, those of you who may not have taken advantage of this great feature, what we do is we take the incident number 902 that gets embedded in the header of that outbound email that we just sent such that uh, I'll log into Scott's uh, email here. Here's the notification uh, that uh, he got from email conversation management with the attachment that we put in there. And when he replies to that email, what you will see happen as soon as the job has a chance to fire here, the response or the email in will actually show up in the details section. And there's Scott's re response automatically tied back in to the section. So that's a very useful feature. It gives you a great uh, conversational trail. It gives you a great chronological trail of exactly what happened and who said what. But we have also added a tracking tab in the new feature that kind of lets you know you know, when, was the, when is the ticket due, when was it open, who was the last person to modify it. So we're kind of giving you a different look and feel of where you find that, uh, that auditing type of, uh, type of information there. So if I'm working this incident and, you know, another incident comes in or I need to open up a new incident or, you know, the phone rings and it says, hi, this is Jeff, I'm calling about my, uh, you know, my incident I had open the other day and I opened that. As you can see, it's just an additional tab that opens. So I could, you know, have any number of tabs open. And since we show the number, and again, I'm on incident, but this would apply to work orders or changes as well, it's very easy for me to say, oh, I need to go back and look at incident 902, or I'm over here on uh, number uh, 32, and be able to tra tra traverse that uh, as we go through that. And it just makes it, you know, very easy to use as you go through there. Dashboards are always available to you right from here. Obviously, this is one of those default dashboards where i am got things color-coded by an urgency. Again, if I open up an incident from the quick view, as you can see, it just opens up an additional tab up here uh, to the top and then embeds it with the appropriate number, as we, as we had kind of talked about there. So the biggest thing, again, as you get into this particular version is it's just a more attractive interface. It's a little flatter because since we're using the tabs, we're not using near as many pop-up windows. So it just becomes a little more, uh, little more user, user friendly as, uh, as you do that. I do want to real quickly just show you an example of, uh, again, for those of you who aren't on 10 and haven't taken advantage of uh, templates yet, let me uh, just put in that we've got a uh, who my requester is here, and I'm going to indicate that uh, that we've got a project here or a move ad change. We'll actually call it here. Oops, and loaded. Yep. 
Thursday. All right, we'll give it a second here. Just a little slow today on this laptop. I Roger, while you're waiting on Roger, while you're waiting on that, the question came in. Um, can you look at two tickets at the same time? Well, yeah, they can both be opened in a tab. Now, you can't display them both on the screen at the same time, no, but you can just bounce between the tabs to be able to see them. So on this new incident here, I'm going to use a template that I had already defined in version 10, and many of you may have seen this if I've done demos for you before. But I'm going to pick the template of a standard new employee, because again, regardless of your line of business, most people can identify with this. So if I select my, uh, my new employee as my template here and apply that, what you can see is it fills in the description, it sets the impact, it sets the urgency, it sets the status to, to open, and then as soon as I uh, uh, save that record, you'll see my work order tab light up down here. And if I then look at it, you can see that I've created a number of work orders. So I'll just blow that up for you. Uh, that we've got here. I've got uh, you know security badges and access rights and set up a computer. The typical types of things that you might would uh, you would think about as a new employee. But you'll notice that one of these work orders that fired was that we need to get approval to be able to grant these login rights. We just don't automatically do that. So you know, a work order went out to an individual saying that we need level one approval, and the way that's set up is there's a successor. You'll notice that little checkbox there. The successor work order, if we get an approval, will be to give them login rights to Oracle and employee benefits. But that that, that will not fire. That work order will not get assigned unless we get this approval. So again, to show you how that would work. I'll just refresh this little thing. Here's a notice in this inbox of request for approval for work order number 1500. And again, this is going back to the HTML way. You can actually have an actionable link here. So if I click approve and respond there, then our mail listen rule in SDE will interpret that work order coming back in, and then it will update the uh, it will update the tickets to reflect that it has been approved. And it takes just a second to uh, uh, to uh, get that updated, but uh, the job has to fire. But it will say that that's been approved, and that will cause the other uh, the other work orders then uh, then to go out. So if we peek back up in here, <clears throat> you'll you'll see that now if we go back here on our particular incident and take a look at our work orders, you'll see that we now have a closed work order, and that's where we got in the uh, the work order that that went out on where we got the approvals to do that. So that predecessor successor work order, how you can sequence those, and again, how you can use the HTML to tab actionable uh, uh, icons in the email to respond to makes it, uh, makes it a very good way to, uh, to try to do that. So a uh, couple of other things here. We talked about that uh, self-service is a little different. So uh, this is the look and feel, and since we now include the client services, you can see that I also have an option to register as a new user, or I can indicate that I forgot my password, and we can handle that right from the, uh, the self-service thing. Now, the, the look and feel here, the layout, is, was started uh, being available in 9.6, but if you only had self-service, you are really only concerning yourself with incidents, and you didn't have the frequently asked questions and some of these other things. But, through client services, not only can we do incidents, but we can get to our work order forms, which we refer here to as service requests, because typically from an end user, they don't identify with the word work order, as well as we could get to our purchase request systems for you know, requesting that you know, new software or hardware you know, be uh, bought on our behalf. And most of you are used to seeing this if you use standard self-service, where I can see the status of what my tickets are. But the enhancements you get with client services is if I am so designated as a departmental manager or as a company manager, I have the ability to not only see my incidents but see the other people within my organizational uh, organizations. I could see their incidents as well. So here I've got some for Scott Bellow, for Paul Cobb, you know, for lots of different groups because they're all part of my company structure. So. Uh, that's another new feature that uh, that you do get 